are watching us live on the InfoWars Nightly News. It's about 8, 17 p.m. here in Austin, Texas. We can go to a live shot now. I think we've got some aerial footage coming in from Fox News. Uh, they're out there at Phoenix, and Joe Biggs has landed. I'm not sure. Has he arrived there yet, guys? Or do we have an ETA on Joe Biggs? On He's route. still en route. Okay. Well, you can see there's a, a pretty large crowd gathering there now, and I guess the, the prayer time would have started just a couple of minutes ago. So um, joining me now in studio, Rob Dew. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to point out that you started your Twitter account today. I mean, like... I finally fell into the pit. In epic you troll it. fashion, you started a Twitter account specifically to troll someone. I, I, I just sent Why? one... Tweet out about this, and it was in response to an article that one Matt Visor wrote. Uh, one reporter searched for talk show host Alex Jones, and it was very interesting. I got this email. If you guys scroll down to the bottom, you see my first tweet was about five or six Polar hours ago. Tweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I saw this guy's email. I contacted him. I said, "Hey, you know, let's see if we can work something out." Alex does not have a lot of time. When does he get here in the morning? He gets here about 20 minutes before the show and he's looking at news. Right. And then he's done. He does some business around here, wraps a few things up, and then he's off to meetings, doing other things. He doesn't sit around, hang out in the office, playing video games, tweeting, doing all this other stuff. <laughs> he's not here. Um, you know, he's working like he works from his house all the time, right. but he's not physically here that much as, as much as he, as he used to be when I first started, we would be up here till eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, shooting videos, editing, doing all kinds he's of stuff. He's earned the right to not have to be here 15, 16 exactly. hours a day. He's, a, he's got a good crew underneath him. Uh, we, we're all, we're pretty much self-contained. He throws us, you know, some, some leads when we need them, go in this direction, go in this direction. Um, so I said, okay, I'll see what I can do to set it up. And I talked to Alex and he said, you know, see if he'll just come on the show live because I'm really not going to have time to talk to him today. Well, and this is when all that stuff was going down where they were like, oh, Alex Jones didn't show up to right. our interview and this all that. Net, pretty much two days after. Yeah. Uh, when he, when, uh, was it ABC, Stephanopoulos? Some um, Sunday show. Yeah, they didn't, they weren't going to do it live or they were going to do it live and then they said not to, all that stuff. And so I, I'm like, yeah, you know, he, he put the call out to mainstream media. Here's a mainstream media guy from the Boston Globe, a writer. I went and checked him out. Uh, you know, he writes mainly about coffee and kind of social stuff. So I'm like, wow, I guess they're, but he, I think he went on the campaign trail with Romney. So he does have some political things. And so they sent him here to do some Jade Helm stuff. And I guess he just assumed we all sit around and wait for mainstream media to contact us for interviews. That's what we live for, which we don't. Right. And, but I was happy to, you know, try to see if we could work about it to get him here. And I said, you know, how about this? How about you come on live? You do the interview. I think this will be, this will be something good for you. This will probably get your name out there. A lot more than, you know, where you're at now at the Boston Globe. It's a little small uh, newspaper. And so at first he said, yes, he could do it. And so I sent him the address and we don't put out our address that much. Uh, that's something that we do keep private because otherwise we would get tons of people, people here trying to give us, day. give us the documents. Don't and come here. <laughs> there's ways to do that. And it's mainly yeah. through email. If you ever want to get in touch with me, I usually I have my email down on my name key. It's robd at infowars.com. I'm more than happy to communicate with you via email. Um, also, and now I have my Twitter account and so you can <laughs> send me stuff that way. But <laughs> I read a lot of emails and I do respond to a lot of emails. Um, I don't respond to every email. And I don't read every email. I probably have 100,000 emails I've never read in my inbox. We get thousands of emails every day. In total insanity. But I do what I can. And um, so with that, we tried to get him over here. Then, then he hemmed and hawed and said, oh, well, I talked to another editor. And they said, no, I can't do it. And I said, well, don't come by the office then. Because we don't want to have a reporter here that we have to hang out with and babysit while we're trying to do our other jobs. You know, if you look at the command post in there, when they're doing the live show, there's six people working in there. And that's just the people running the show. We got writers. We have the guys um, run the warehouse. We have graphics design people. We have hot tech people, computer tech people. We've got the nightly news division and the reporters. It, and then you got customer service. It's a big operation here. Very big operation. So, you know, I said, don't come here. And, and, and then I went on the air and told Alex that, hey, he's not coming. We, we thought he would be here. Now he's not coming. And Alex got mad and said, that's it. We're done with him. Because this guy wanted to also have a phone interview. I said, you, I said, if you come in and do the one hour or 30 minutes with Alex, we'll give you a phone interview. No problem. After the show, you can talk to Alex when he's going to a meeting. He said he's got to be at a meeting at 3.30 while he's driving there. He'll talk to you. 
And he could have had that. But he wanted to neg on his showing up here to do the interview, the first interview. So Jones said, that's it. We're done. Which he even mentions in his article. It, but well, he kind of makes he, it look he, like, yeah, I'm, like I'm the jerk who's, who's putting it out on him. Yeah. You know, he, didn't, and, he didn't tell him right away. Right. So it got all misconstrued. And Well, and when I, when I got his, his tweet or his, his text, I texted him back after I got it. I didn't have, once he said he was going to do it, I put my phone down. I'm doing a million other things in the office getting ready for the show. It could be printing something. I even bring Alex coffee sometimes. I mean, whatever needs to be done, I'm here to do it. Everybody's here to, to, to make this, you know, push this boat forward. And uh, so then he tried to make it look like we had staged this thing, which we didn't. Alex didn't know. The word did not get back to him that he was coming on. Because I called Alex after he said that he would do it and said, hey, he's coming on. His name's Matt Visor. He works for the Boston Globe. And Alex immediately went into this Beastie Boys thing over the phone. It was kind of funny. And I laughed. And then he did it on the show. And it was so funny. He even writes about it in his article. So... I hey guys, I hate to interrupt you, but uh, Joe yeah. Biggs is uh, out in the field right now, and uh, he'd like to ah. uh, say hello. There we go. Well, let's go to Joe Biggs right now. So what's going on, Biggs? Can you hear me? Yeah, there's a, a whole line of people um, standing facing the mosque, and in between the people are uh, like riot cops. Excuse me. And then uh, on the other side of the people that are uh, in support of Islam. Wow. Wow, this is... Uh, this is quite a face-off then. There's a lot of people screaming and yelling at each other right now. Is there actually any side of, sort of contest going on, or is that just a ruse to get people out there? There's a lot of anger out here, though. Yeah, this is... And it's all coming from the other side right now. It's What's coming from the, the Muslims? The Muslim side or the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, they're they're screaming and cussing and telling everybody to to go f off. Huh. Well, we got a good question from somebody on Twitter, Truth Depot. He wants to. He's asking, do you think the people putting on the drawing contest are government agents trying to spark unrest? What do you think of that, Biggs? Joe Biggs? Do you think they got some controlled opposition in there? Or? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> he might not even be able to hear us. Joe, can you hear us? Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. Do, yeah. So do you think it, it's possible that these bikers, since we just had the biker incident in Texas, that, that maybe some of them are working uh, as agents for the government? Or do you think this is just a... Uh, Try to stir up unrest? A natural event. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no. Joe Biggs, let everyone know that you are live. He is live. <laughs> yeah, tell people yeah, they're live on TV. Well, I mean, there's a giant, giant crowd of people. I mean, you can't tell people to to not cuss and be emotional oh no hey Army. you know that's gonna happen i totally sure, understand Army. that yeah all right we're on. how you doing good all right well so let's what, so what, what do you think, do you think? <laughs> i think it's my first amendment right to be out here yeah you know what i'm saying yeah if this if muhammad is gonna cry over a cartoon what about jesus he never cried he's not crying about it he's saying go for it it doesn't matter but when i'm in the united states i defended this country I will not back down from anybody trying to stamp on my rights, including Mr. Obama. <laughs> no. yeah. Now, this seems like so, it's yeah. totally spontaneous. It was just announced this morning that they were going to do this, right? No, I think when, it's been, no, the a guy over here, it's been a couple days. Yeah. The guy over here on the other side, there's two guys over on the other side that keep trying to pick fights with people. Oh, well, of course. That's Well, and that's that's the question that we just uh we have from one of our Twitter Oh, yeah, the guys flipping people off and all black. Yeah. And see, that was that was kind of one of the issues that I had with this is that this 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 wasn't like a planned cartoon event. I mean, they're going to be they're telling people to bring their cartoons, bring their drawings that they did, and then they're going to announce a winner at the end of it to make it be some sort of a thing, but you know, I really got the impression that this was sort of a provocatoring type event. So what do you think? What do you think about this today? I just got here, man. This is awesome. I think it's Americans yeah, fed up. Yeah. Well, and that's with being told what to say and how to say it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and our government isn't condemning any of the stuff going on in the Middle East. They seem to be fine with with what's going on. They won't say burning down a church is an act of terror. We, they didn't even call the, the so Beheading the two Christians guys, is an act of terror. one of the reasons why the person who put this event on wanted to go to this specific mosque is that the two guys who came to Waco, the two terrorist wannabes who went to Waco uh, and attacked or attempted to attack um, 
the people there are from this mosque or right. they had ties to this mosque. So that's why they are out here protesting outside of the the Islamic community mosque there in Phoenix. And um, so, yeah, I mean, David Knight said it earlier that the First Amendment has has been worth dying for in the past. So, you know, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that that's, you know, something that they really want to do. But they said, you know, exercise your Second Amendment if our First Amendment is crushed. So Biggs, give us a, a, a layout of the size here. How many people seem to be with the bikers and with the with the Draw Muhammad cartoon rally? And then how many um, are, I guess, with the mosque, with the Islamic Center? Uh, I'd say maybe 300 right now on the Islam side and about... 3,000 on the other, on our side over here. <laughs> wow. And then how many police, how many police? Um, probably about, I don't know. I'd say three, 4,000 in the area. I mean, right here in front of me, probably about 60 to 70. But, uh, I mean, they're around every corner. There's more showing up right now. Right. Yeah. Now there, it looks like they're putting up a barricade between the two groups. Yeah. Okay. This is just insane. But, you know, uh, you know notice these guys aren't in riot gear. I mean, they have riot helmets on, but it's not the full battle armor, tear gas, uh, ready to, to just wipe the floor with people. They're just there to be keep the peace. Peace officers. Do you see anyone with open carry? Hey, guys. Do I see anybody with who? Two guys How many are open carrying boss. right now? And two guys trying to kill a friend of mine. Love your neighbor. What's going on? Well... Previous to the shooting in Texas. Yeah, that's where I'm from. Okay, there were two guys from this mosque that got convicted in federal court for conspiracy for terrorism, right? So we got two guys convicted, two guys out of this mosque went to go shoot somebody that I know personally. So apparently, I'll hold it up, this cartoon by Bosch Faustin was the winning cartoon in Texas. Come over this way a little bit so okay. the light's on you. Oh yeah, I'll put it around. So this was the winning cartoon in Texas, in Garland by our, uh, Bosch Fonsti, okay? This was apparently worth being killed over. He was gonna die for this, okay? This is actually somebody I know personally. This is a personal issue for me, okay? All he was, he's a former Muslim. Okay, 9-11, he went back and studied the Quran seriously, and he read it, and he determined it was evil, okay? He adopted a new philosophy and became an atheist, and now he's got a death warrant against him. He gets countless death threats every single day because of this. If we can't speak out, we can't speak, we can't think. The ultimate goal is to destroy intellectual freedom right. and the ability for persuasion instead of violence. If we can't talk, we can't think, we can't be intellectual, we can't debate, we can't persuade, we cannot use channels that are nonviolent. This is what they want to stop. They want to stop thinking, they want to stop debate. Mm. They want to stop persuasion because they're against persuasion. They're for force. This is just an intellectual issue. It's on paper. That's all it is. Wow. It's that simple. And I'm shocked that behind me, there's supporters. All they had to do was check. This mosque has supported many people that have gone out and started jihad activities. They've had two people convicted in federal court. And they had two shooters from this mosque. Yeah. How much more do you need? Ultimately, we're all motivated by ideas. Very well said. Get his name, bitch. They ideas seriously. They do. What's your they name? act on it. My name is Jonathan Conley. Man, Conley, yeah. Yeah. very well said. I'm going to get his contact nice info. Yeah. This is ultimately an intellectual battle, but they bring it to us as a physical battle. We have to respond in some fashion. This is how we respond. We hold up and we speak. Right. What is the alternative besides that? You know, and we were trying to do that at the uh, hashtag Black Never Lives Matter that. protest. Right. We were Thank trying you. to hold up signs and speak for the ones that can't be spoken for. These little babies so now, that are being killed. Now, mm -hmm. Go now ahead, as you Jeff. can see, they've, now you can see they put up yeah. this huge thing up. They've got an area lane for the police. And now everyone's uh, chanting USA. Wow. Hmm. It's quite a crowd. Yeah. Friday afternoon in Phoenix, Arizona. This is the site of the Islamic uh, Cultural Center. Isla it's the Islamic Community Mosque. Communi Islamic Community Mosque. Oh, there's a good aerial shot right there. You can see the two sides. 
facing off. I, I can see the American flags on one side, and uh, and then you can see the the Muslim crowd. They, they look almost can the I same size. Uh, can I see your sign? Yeah. Yeah, uh, come over this way a little bit so the light's on. Look at Biggs giving camera direction. <laughs> can you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, there's the Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, we see the Charlie Hebdo uh, yeah. cartoon. It says, oh. don't mess with Texas. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's actually when they had a few wannabe ISIS, ISIS, ISIS two, people. Texas plus two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. Well, that's why. Biggs, what's Amanda your opinion? So do you think do you think violence could kick off at any time, or does it look like it's just going to be oh, a yeah. shouting match? Yeah, there's uh, some definitely some uh, some violent, angry people on the other side right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're coming out and screaming at people and flipping everyone off. Definitely not being uh, peaceful. Well, how do you feel? Time, I'll tell you that. How do you feel knowing that they they were making ISIS was making some threats on Twitter or some of their wannabe jihadists were threatening this uh, event on Twitter? Yeah, and now on the other side, they're flying the flag upside down. I don't know if you guys can see that. On the other side, that's just a sign yeah. of distress. I don't, I don't think they realize that. That's, that's just a sign of distress. That means your oh, yeah, country is in distress. Well, and that's the thing that's so important to let people know is that this is America, and the First Amendment is very important to us. People have died to what? ensure that we have that right. And, and I don't know if, if the Muslim side of these people are supporting what ISIS is doing or supporting what Al-Qaeda is, is doing, but one thing's for sure, and it's come out, we talked about it right in the beginning, but we are funding Al-Qaeda. We jump-started ISIS, essentially, into what's going on now to use them as a proxy army, and now they're running wild. And that's what happens with these incidents. Uh, I was reading an article, I've got one up here from the Wall Street Journal from May 25th, talking about the Battle of Ramadi. Now, let me ask you this, Biggs. Yeah. So the Battle of Ramadi started yes. around May 5th. It talks about that the Islamic State launched an attack. The Iraqis held them off with helicopters in the Golden Division. And then on the 13th, they, uh, ISIS established a sniper nest and started taking out some people. Then on the 14th, they bring in an armored bulldozer yeah, we're live right now on the news. and spend over an hour clearing out a concrete barricade. Now, how come we didn't have any drones up in the air watching this and taking out this armored bulldozer? Biggs, let me ask you that. How, how could we, if we're supporting with air support on this campaign, how do we not take out this armored bulldozer that was breaking through the uh, the blockades that they put it going into Ramadi? I mean, that would be easy to do. Exactly. And then after that, they drive in 27 Humvees that have been converted into, they, they give it a name, uh, VR, let's see, it's, it's really interesting what they call it. Vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices are V-beds and most of these were made from captured U.S. Uh, military armored vehicles designed to be impervious to small arms fire. So they were able to drive these into the city, blow up the outer defenses, and then invade. Wow. And we didn't have any air support, that, and that's how it fell. They were able to cut the, cut the groups in half. The Golden Division was cut off from the rest, and then everybody retreated. I mean, if that's not picture-perfect telltale evidence that we don't care what's going on with ISIS, we're just letting them run wild. Right. I think about the people and that we're died. dropping them weapons. The Iraqis are mad. And yeah. it's probably because the Iraqis have been coming out saying, hey, you're dropping them weapons. We've seen your helicopters. We fired at your helicopters because we see them bringing them weapons. It's ridiculous. Joe Biggs, your comments, if you could hear any of that. No, you were cutting out on that. You were saying about uh, in Ramadi how it fell. Yeah, it just it just seemed like there were plenty opportun- ample opportunity for drone strikes to be used in this fashion to repel an I mean, attack. I mean, I mean, there, there was there was ample opportunity to take out ISIS back uh, this time last year. Oh yeah, they were convoying in from uh, uh, the northern part down into Iraq. I mean, we could have done successive bracketing. There's all kinds of things we could have used. We could have done, you know, hit the first convoy, stop the convoy, then hit the last vehicle so no one can back up, and then you got it pinned right there, and then you just start nailing them with, uh, you know, airstrikes. It'd have been over with. We wouldn't be where we are today. And yet we allowed them to come into Iraq. We allowed them to take it back over after we found a reason to go into Iraq for these weapons of mass destruction that we were told. And then we send countless human beings lives to go over there and die for something that was a lie. And now we're letting this Frankenstein monster that we've created come back and destroy the country that we helped try to get back. And now they're taking everything over. 
we're accidentally airdropping supplies to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just out of control. And then we're offering no air support at all. Yeah. You know, at least if you're going to say we're going to offer air support and drone strikes and missile strikes, then do it. You know, don't let don't let city after city just fall and go. Well, we don't know what's going on, but don't show video right the of of the ISIS uh, uh, convoys. Don't show video of that because that's old news. That's what they came out. The Obama administration went to Fox and said, "Don't show video of that anymore because we don't like it." Because you know why? Because you see them in brand new vehicles. You see them in Humvees right. that we've delivered there and just left for them to take. It's it's totally ludicrous. Totally ludicrous. And then Judicial Watch comes out. Secret Pentagon report reveals U.S. created ISIS as a tool to overthrow serious President Assad. Right. I mean, that's, it's all the proof is there. And it's stuff we've been saying for a long time. It, it's not, we didn't just come up with this. It, it, you go search, just go to the Alex Jones channel and search for videos on we created ISIS. And you'll find tons of videos. We've been saying it since day one that this is a proxy army that we created. Hey, Joe, if you can hear us, tell us what's going on right now out in Phoenix on location at the Islamic Cultural Center. Or is it Islamic Community right. Center? I keep saying it wrong. Yeah. Islamic Community Center oh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Rounds. Looks like he's turning. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah. So Tell us what's going on, Joe. Here. We... There's a lot of people out here. There's screaming going on on both sides, mostly from the other side, screaming over. And then uh, you've got some people, looks like they've kind of infiltrated and came on our side. So the cops have been kind of like walking around, keeping an eye on them. Yeah, keep an eye on those people because those are the ones that will attack. This is exactly... Uh, I guess they're taking from right from the communist playbook. We had to deal with a smaller version of this a few months ago. Oh, there's an evil gun carrier, Big. Yeah. Are you scared? Oh, you there's frightened. a g- g- gun. There's some open carry. Well, I, um, well, I actually have my uh, HD firearms rifle on me right now. Oh my goodness! How dare you? So How dare that's you protect why everyone yourself? coming up talking to you. <laughs> so Davis Absolute, uh, he's a Phoenix native, and he's asking oh, yeah, you to interview. It's got the tripod on it, or the bipod. Very good. <laughs> look at that! Look at that smile on his face. And I, I've shot that same gun. That sh- that gun shoots like a Cadillac. Well, we wielding know knives. A- you hear that? They, they wielding they heard- knives, of course. Yeah, no. They, the guy just said that he's he's like a security guy. Uh huh. He said that there's word that uh, there's guys on the other side that have knives. And they've heard him say that they're going to come jump, like bum rush the line and come over here and start stabbing people. What? Okay, tell that to the cops. <laughs> Did the cops know this? Uh, Rob, uh, have, sure. have they never know. heard you don't bring a knife to a gunfight? Yeah, but that's going to get, oh my God. That's going to be crazy. This is yeah. almost insane. Yeah, you don't, you, Joe Jennings popped in. I don't know if that went out over the air, but he said you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. And you've got a lot of armed uh, patriots there. Um so Biggs, Man. we we have a Davis Absolute on Twitter. He's a Phoenix native, and he's asking you to interview Muslims and peaceful Christian protesters that are in the blue shirts. So well, I guess they've, uh, they've blocked us off. We can't go over there. Well, I think they're on both sides. They're the ones in the blue shirts. So there, I guess there's a big group of them. We'll see. You might have right just there. passed one right there. There's a blue shirt no, right there. Yeah, but that's, that's just a dirty T-shirt. Those guys have uh, <laughs> stuff written on theirs over there. Uh, okay. Yeah. They're, they're like a they're darker blue. I'll see, but I mean they've got lines up. Yeah. So we're getting a lot of questions. People wondering if this is part of Jade Helm, if this is going to be used to uh, foment civil unrest and be and be used for that. Of course, obviously, if a knife and a gunfight starts okay. going off, that's gonna hey, change so the game the, the guy over here with the hat on mm-hmm. the group looking yeah that's the guy that's right he's the one that's been saying he's gonna come over here apparently and start stabbing people really he's the shorter guy right in front of you well, we don't want yeah him. i can't get across as soon as you get close to this thing they come at you phoenix is a hotbed of people i've, I've been there a couple times it's a hotbed of people who are into being free and living free and you know when when it you know the truth comes out that hey these guys were at a mosque in your backyard i i agree with what they're doing out here coming out and and just stating hey we know what's going on if you're going to be a terrorist factory we're going to have a problem with that we didn't have a problem with you before when you were doing your muslim thing praying you know keeping to yourselves or just not not going out provoking you know but but if you're creating shooters who are going out and attacking people Mm -hmm. well now there's a problem Right. You know, now we need to 
Now we need to, uh, you know, man up and show up and just let people know that we're not going to take it. So what do you think is the right position to take? Because I know there are some peaceful protesters in the crowd who are trying to bring everyone kind of together and, and don't want this thing to get out of hand because obviously if someone rushes the line with a knife, it could get a lot worse. That's yeah. not going to be, it's not going to be good there tonight. But I mean, what do you think is personally, I, I like it when people come out in, in, in a crowd and voice their opinions and then you find out who really wants to talk and who really isn't interested in talk right now. It looks like, you know, people holding American flags, holding signs, they're just saying, hey, not in our, not in my backyard. You're not going to become a terrorist breeding ground in my backyard. Right. Well, I guess. I mean, they obviously didn't have a problem with them building their Islamic community center right there because it's built. It's pretty big. Right. It takes up at least half a block. That yeah, whole it's section. right there by the the, the university and, and uh, federal buildings and everything like that. But so the, the gentleman that Biggs was speaking with initially, really powerful stuff that he was saying oh, yeah. there. Uh, and like that it's a cartoon, you know, it's a, a drawing on paper and that was, you know, worth someone losing their life over. And if we bow down to that, then, you know, what are we? And that's kind of exactly what happened in D.C. They had um, they they were wanting to put up posters for this Muhammad drawing contest. Mm -hmm. And rather than do that, they just stopped for the next six months. Any PSAs or anything like this that oh, right. would be kind of provocative. Yeah. They just shut it all down. No signs there in the D.C. Metro because they didn't want this particular event or the, the Muhammad cartoon or whatever to go up in the Metro DC there. Now, as the Metro authority, were they just thinking, okay, you know, this is going to be a target. I Someone's going to saying... come blow up the tunnel, but then there, there's a thing. Now we're exactly, we're, we have to censor because ourselves. of a cartoon, right? We are not, you know, we're not going to let advertisers or PSAs or things go up because we don't want to get bombed. This is America. And it's like you said, when you, you know, this is close to a university. You look at universities around the country. They're all playing this free speech zone game. We have to approve what you're going to say. We have to see what you're going to do. You have to have a permit. You have to go into a zone. And that's not what this country is all about. This country is about people expressing themselves and expressing their ideas. As long as your ideas and actions don't interfere with anyone else's. Although there's a lot of spots where we've taken that away. Uh, especially when you look at, you know, the way people want to medicate themselves in this country. They're only allowed to do it the, the big pharma way is the only possible way right. you could actually heal yourself. As long Any as other your way message is government approved. is wrong or you're a conspiracy theorist. But right. you know, it, when you get to the self censorship level, this is how the terrorists win. Right. This is it. When people don't say anything, when people are afraid to speak out, when people, you know, get censored from putting we're gonna get rid of all PSAs. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're gonna punish everybody. Right. No one can say anything because we don't want anyone to be offended because those people tend to go and chop people's heads off. Or and all this is done by our government creating terror groups. They created Al Qaeda in the 80s. We're having all these problems now because of Al Qaeda in the 80s. Right. That's it. And we're still continuing, even though we've seen what Osama bin Laden turned into and all of that, we're still continuing to arm and fund and train the rebels now thinking they're not going to turn around and be the same thing 10 years down the line. And it's our open worship of, of Saudi Arabia and, and their regime there. We don't condemn them for doing anything. So they become a breeding ground for terrorists. And that's where you look. Most of the hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. They didn't come from Afghanistan. They didn't come from Syria. I think maybe one did. But right. most of them came from Saudi Arabia. Right. No invasion of Saudi Arabia. Who is Iraq? Who didn't even... Yeah. Well, have anything to do with it. Oh, we just happen to have bases on Saudi Arabia. Oh, we helped them out in the first Gulf War. All right. So I'm getting word now that we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Uh, we'll go right back to the live coverage if anything, if anything does happens break, there. Yeah. We'll be on standby. And, hey, why don't you guys uh, pull up? I think John Bound did a second report today. You got a, a description of that right there. The It's about what Obama's doing. Court battle for the illegals. Obama must destroy middle-class America. Right. He's bringing, instead of rising the tide and making prosperity happen everywhere, we're going to lower the dock level down to the least common denominator. So we're all wallowing in, in you know, filth and scum going, please just give us our, our digital soup line card so we can eat. Mm -hmm. That's that's where the policies of this country are going. They're not for freedom and individuality and prosperity. It's going in the complete opposite direction. It's to drag us down with the rest of the third world instead of getting the third world out of that 
because we could do it. We have the technology. Oh yeah. Worldwide, everybody could be in, in yeah. a in a. We could make a easily a paradise in this world Absolutely. if we just started changing. We don't let bankers run everything. That's if the, the problem. If the people that Rex Jones interviewed would just st start caring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'd be like, what's well, TPP? Is that toilet paper? Uh, uh, Might as well you know, be because it's flushing the country down the toilet. And that was Rex Jones's first outing with a microphone talking to people. Yeah. The guy did a masterful job. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's go to Bounds Report. Maybe we'll play a couple ads. Uh, I encourage people out there, if you're watching this right now on YouTube or on Infowars.com forward slash show, we always appreciate our PrisonPlanet.tv members who are some big supporters of us. PrisonPlanet.tv, you can become, you can share your username and password with up to 20 people. So by getting one membership, you can share it with up to 20 people and you could all be watching at the same time the show that you're watching right now. So we're going to reconnect with Joe Biggs here after this short break and see what else is going on in Phoenix. We thank you for joining us for this live coverage here uh, on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're, what, th two hours in right now. Yep. Wow, there you go. So we'll be right back after this. And I've, I've said this consistently. Um, my job in the executive branch is supposed to be to carry out the laws that are passed. What I'm not going to do is just wait. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that I've uh, shown a lot of patience and tried to work uh, on a bipartisan basis as much as possible. Uh, and I'm going to keep on doing so, but in the meantime, uh, let's figure out what we can do lawfully through uh, executive action. What about what's in the interest of the American people? America is not an oligarchy. The masters of the universe, they don't get to meet at the White House and decide how to run this country. President Obama's legacy of bulldozing the Constitution with an executive branch arrogance unparalleled in American history has hit another snag. The judicial branch has yet again foiled the globalist engineered subversive dilution of what remains of America's receding middle class. As 53% of Democrats are chomping at the bit to get illegals voting according to a recent Rasmussen poll, the American middle class has receded by over 10%. As more illegals pick up blue and white collar American jobs, jobs the liberals would have you believe are jobs Americans won't do, a lower middle class income is becoming the norm for born and raised Americans. Obama's plans were thwarted on Tuesday after a federal appeals court in New Orleans denied the executive request to implement action deferring deportation of millions of illegals. 26 states, including Texas, are suing and want the action put on permanent hold. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said Texas just won the executive amnesty case at the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. The Constitution wins. Obama must now throw the Hail Mary to the Supreme Court, but that move could put his action in limbo until the end of his reign in office. His administration has decided to focus on the appeal of the injunction as it moves forward through the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in July. Ann Coulter and Jorge Ramos fiercely debated the actual census numbers concerning just how many illegals are now residing in the United States. Studies by award-winning journalists have put the number as high as 30 million, meaning a quarter of the Mexican population has moved to the United States. Do you think that people are biologically predisposed to commit crime? No, I think there are cultures that are obviously deficient. And if they weren't deficient, you wouldn't be sitting in America interviewing me. I'd be sitting in Mexico. You fled that culture because it is a, there are a lot of problems with that culture. When you bring the people here, you bring those cultures here. That includes honor killings. It includes uncles raping their nieces, it, not paying your taxes. It includes paying bribes to government officials. That isn't our culture. You can. But it's particularly difficult to be effective when the administration continues to sabotage its own efforts by embracing unconstitutional policies like the president's executive action. I think perhaps the larger tragedy is that the president has poisoned the well in Congress and destroyed any trust whatsoever between the executive branch and the c Congress when it comes to fixing our broken immigration system. I feel obliged to do everything I can lawfully with my executive authority to make sure that uh, we don't keep on making the system worse. As the illegals crossing become more desperate and violent, Ramos and others like Luis Gutierrez won't rest until the entire population of Mexico is here. A creeping cultural imperialism that can only break the back of the almighty American dollar and dream. John Baum for Infowars.com.
All right, and welcome back to this live edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be right back with Joe Biggs. He's live out there in Phoenix, Arizona. I uh, wanted to talk about some of your Twitter questions. You can send us in your questions. I am at Leanne McAdoo, Do's News with a Z, and there's also Liberty Tarion back there uh, answering your questions on Twitter. Rob? In the future. Yeah, go ahead. We've got the guy who put this event together is on with Biggs right now. We need to cut to them. All right, All right let's go let's to him. cut to him. All right, this is the guy who put this uh, event together. He's talking right now. And now my family is right. in hiding, and I'm having to go into hiding afterwards. Do you have any different opinion after talking? Nope. Correct, right? I, this is and, how, and this is how it's saying, been with a lot of Muslims. Was, uh, and <laughs> some will still also say that, you know, they're allowed to sit there and deceive the infidel. So, but you, you didn't have a nice conversation. You, you didn't get a positive reaction from that conversation? Uh, we were peaceful. It was a peaceful conversation. I am capable. I am a Marine. I have discipline. I am capable to have a peaceful conversation with somebody. Okay, and I have questions, and I and I want answers, and, and that's what it came down to. And now, and, and you brought up you, you got to wear a Kevlar. You've got some uh, got my guys family surrounding you yeah. with with guns. Was it worth it? Absolutely. You know, I just <laughs> sacrificed myself. I just sat. I just bought my house, first house I bought in my life. Okay, trying to raise my family out here. I just bought it a year ago. And now we're going to have to sell it. I just sacrificed my entire livelihood just to expose what's going on in this country. Okay? Our freedom of speech is under attack. If you don't believe me, there's a group of people over there that think that I should be beheaded for wearing a shirt or for drawing a cartoon. There is also a group of people over there that are not Muslims, but they are the same type of people that spit on our Vietnam veterans when they came home. Well, there, there was a lot of spitting going on on this side today, too. Uh, and I don't condone that. So we're, we'll do our, our part, and uh, we're going to police our own. Well, well, that's what this I'm this gentleman right over right here right. said he's, he, they're going to uh, practice and do their part and oh, yeah, police yeah. their own. I still encourage anybody in any major city to fire up your own freedom of speech rally. Don't call it an anti-Islam. Don't let the media twist it. Uh, but a freedom of speech rally, I want it to happen in every state. OK, and I, I hope they all remain peaceful. What's planned from here on out tonight? Uh, I go, I hop in the truck with uh, some some fellow Americans and, and we disappear for a while. Disappear for a while. You, you, you say you go into hiding or just go into uh, I'm, I'm going into I'm going into hiding for a while. All right. ICE has posted my address. My family's already way off the radar. And uh, they post, they, they've they called for lone wolf attacks. Uh, I've had a few of these individuals over here that are say, saying they're going to murder me and all that stuff. Like, I, we expected it. I know. I knew I knew what we were coming here to. So and I and I came here and I have not once said that I want any of them to be murdered. OK, I support their First Amendment and their right to. Their, their freedom of speech. I support anybody coming out here that wants to burn the American he flag. for that. Do it peacefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get it out of your system. Go home. It, you know, people can look at you, call you a dumbass, and you go about your way. And we all we all continue to live and get on with our lives. Final question. Sorry. So there's a lot of police resources used up today. A lot of heated back and forth. Is it really worth it to, to make this point? I didn't call for the police the forces like, to be out here. They're out here because. Uh, we were, well, let, me, let me also say this. May 17th, we were out here. Well, we were out here thing. fully armed. We came out here a few hours, voiced our opinion, held our protest. Everything was peaceful. There was a handful of cops. Everybody was courteous. All right. There was no throwing. There was nothing rude. We weren't throwing pig meat or nothing like that. Uh, and, and we all went home that night. Now, though, today, a lot of police resources, potentially some bad blood. Was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. Again, this has to be done worth it. just to yeah. show Americans and the, the rest land of the, of the world free, that our freedom of speech for a reason. People fought attack. for that. And Obviously, corporate controlled media wouldn't way. understand that. No. Infowars. Info What's up, man? Nice. How you doing? Good. Thanks for your service. Thanks. Thank you for your service. Talk to him, Biggs. Glad you guys are out here, huh? Spreading the truth. Yeah, I've been in. Uh, Tell me he's uh, live right now. So I just, I just flew in today from uh, Cleveland. I'm going to Baltimore tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. So. Right Tell on. Well, I appreciate you guys making it out here, and uh, you know. This, this so, guy's got a button on his backpack. Hey, I'll shake your hand. I don't agree with the button, but... Uh, hey, Biggs. Hey, he's your own, and I support your freedom wow. of speech, brother. Yeah, and I knew that would be out there. Every culture in the world so, Biggs. Yeah. Can you hear me? So, ask him, you know, he... 
fought for those people there to have their right to free speech, for their right to be offended with, with him, uh, their right to have their religion there in the middle <laughs> there of Phoenix. You know, They might not agree with each other, but he fought for our rights to have the freedom of speech. I mean, if you could even just talk to him about that, because the, the, there the, ma the mainstream media guy that was talking to him was like, well, was it worth it? Uh, I think when he signed up to join the to be a Marine, it was worth it to fight for this country. This used to be a Christian yeah. church. They bought it and they oh, I gotta wait. It Sure. So how does it feel, you know, fighting for your country like I did as well? And then you fought for the right to give people the ability to go out and do stuff like this and then to be attacked. It's sad, man. Lady Liberty is crying. Uh, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I, I did fight for my country. I went to Iraq twice myself. And uh, although I may not agree with everything that was going on with the war, I still I still rogered up to the call of duty. And uh, this this isn't the country that I want. This isn't the country that our founding fathers wanted. All right. This is this is called this is tyranny right on the other side of that wire right there. Mm -hmm. That's tyranny at its finest. And they want to shut us up. OK, they they think it's OK for someone like me to be beheaded because I'm wearing a shirt or drawing a cartoon. And unfortunately, yeah, I had to sacrifice my own livelihood here in Arizona that I just started a year ago, uh, all to expose what's going on in our country. Wow. How does he feel about the fact the mainstream yeah, media wants him to be silent? The mainstream media oh, is saying, well, why don't the mainstream media wanting you to be silent? Was it worth it? Wanting me to be silent? Or wanting, asking you if it was worth it. Asking if it was worth it. Uh, yeah, that's Anderson Cooper. Fuck Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my next shirt. Fuck Anderson Cooper. I'm sure he wants to behead me. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they consistently ask, was it worth it? I mean, was it worth it to go fight the war? Was it was it worth it there? Everything that I mean. That's where that's what we've come to. It's saying, amazing. Was We're it worth it to fight against this tyranny, to fight against these other people who are coming here to fundamentally change our country? Was it worth it? And hopefully nothing goes wrong and people can go out there and, and say, well, you know, and pull out their put out their First Amendment. Put hopefully this will get a conversation started and not just demonize people who are exercising their First and Second Amendment because they're allowed to do that. That is their right to do that. We're in America. And hopefully this will start a conversation. It won't just get turned into this racial division and, you know, racist white people against you know, Joe, an entire religion and all that. Joe, read some of those signs that I, I can't really make out what they what they are. As soon um, as I get near here, the people ooh. start shining lights. Oh, yeah. wow. That's interesting. I've got so a you, tweet from a Crazy Horse saying thanks so you, goes to the Phoenix Police Department. That person doesn't want to be on camera. That person right well, there. so far away and it's dark. I guess they don't understand how cameras work. <laughs> <laughs> What does that one say? Love, not no, hate. Says, yeah. All right. Love, lo yeah. Love, not hate. One said, like I said, one said, f ISIS, uh, uh, but don't f Islam. Uh, I can't see that good right now because I was just uh, flashing the eye. So. <laughs> Us too. Let me, uh, <laughs> no Revcom. Let me see if I could. No Revcom representatives. Are we? Are we seeing those? Oh no, they're not going to be at a place like this. <laughs> yeah. Big love your neighbor wanting... as yourself. Mm. Uh, love your neighbor. A lot of people are holding love your neighbor signs. Exactly. I think those are the ones in the blue you guys were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Do they bring those signs to these mosques when, you know, the, the people are preparing to go and, uh, what do they call it? When going gonna, jihad? Yeah, well, it, they, seems, it seems like a couple people here that we've heard from, they've had personal uh, effects from this where people have gone out and, and shot the one guy in that's the beginning, what, yeah, that's saying, what he's saying. and then there the girl two, he just talked to. And then, yeah, that was right down the street. So they yeah. must have all known the same person that that happened to. And then two people from this particular mosque, and they were indicted. And then they had two more. And so, you know, we don't want to say that it's this mosque, because I'm sure they have plenty of other mosques. There's a whole online community, uh, things like that. So, you know, we don't want to say that it's they're training these people here or whatever, but there is some sort of an element. And so people need to be able to address this and to be be able to say, wait a minute, this is not what we're about. What is happening? Let's, you know, let's see where the dark elements are within our own organization. And are they already under investigation? How, I mean, why is that not a, a point of focus? I wonder if, you know, that reporter went and asked anyone on that side anything like that no he just wanted to condemn the marine for speaking his mind and getting people active getting people off their couches 
and protecting and exercising their First and Second Amendment. You can't have that. Yeah. They got to be at home watching TV. Biggs, it'd be really interesting. Thanks to all you out there that are watching TV right now. Biggs, if if you can hear me, it'd be really interesting for you to get maybe even a second interview with the people that had that experience. And and if you could get any more information about that particular case, because that's definitely not something that's going to be talked about on the news with regards to this event. It's just going to all be to demonize that Marine and all the people that are out there. It's not going to, they're not going to point out why he was moved and compelled enough to put his life in danger so if you can get a second meet up with them ernesto if you've been watching uh biggs has been trying to go over to the other side and talk to people and the cops will not let him over there they are they're keeping both groups completely apart there was a small group of muslims on the back side from a, a, an adjoining property how are you doing today what do you think about all this stuff that's going on uh, I guess it's just because uh, there's no point to it. He's telling him not to talk. Is, do what? No, I was going to say, I don't know what's going on. I barely care. I mean, Dovey, what do you think about all this, huh? though? It's your personal opinion. I don't know. It we just have a, We have a yeah. spokesman for the mosque. Yeah. If you want, you can interview. Yeah. You guys can't speak for yourselves? I mean, we, it, it, it's no word. This is funny. This Here in America, you got freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. Uh, see see if you can get the spokesman. This is for sure. Going against that, this is, this is going against for, what? You guys saying that... Islam, they no, I never said that. I, I don't agree with ISIS. It's a, do you? What do you? No, do you no, yeah, no, fuck no, no, ISIS. No, no, no. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I said fuck ISIS. But you know, uh, the protest for me is is, is funny. It's just for sure. It doesn't mean anything. Just for sure. I don't know. Got a lot ISIS of people talking. <laughs> do you want to? ISIS is a piece of shit. That guy had the best sign out here. Said, That's right. Fuck ISIS, not Islam. Yeah. It's the best sign out. Here. Yeah. So who's your representative that can talk? He, he's, he's in the box. My dad? But, yeah. Yeah, he already spoke to a couple of media out there. Yeah, he's been well, what, well uh, yeah. Johnny Yarbrough is asking us to ask them their feelings on Sharia law versus the Constitution. Here, Do you think that uh, Sharia law should be implemented in America over the Constitution? That's, uh, we don't believe that. We don't believe that. I mean, that's all you gotta do is yes, yes or no. That's why they're here, right? Because our well, country is great. A lot of people, that's what people wonder. So they want to hear from someone who's being peaceful, and they just want to know. I mean, you gotta understand when someone doesn't know something, they they become fearful. Of course. So that's why I'm trying to ask you. The United States Constitution gave us the right to pray here. So why would we want to get rid of the United States Constitution? Without the Constitution, we don't have a right to pray. These people are gonna jump over the fence and shoot and kill everybody else without the United States Constitution protecting our rights to practice our religion. Right. So why would you want to get rid of that? Okay. Exactly. I mean, I, I agree Amen. with you. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, a lot of people think that there's a lot of people who are radical who are saying, yeah, you know, that all Islam is bad. You know, I believe that everyone should have the right to practice whatever religion they want. That's what the country's founded on. But, you know, I just, I you don't, I don't like ISIS. It's just ignorance. Yeah. Anytime in society, the less you know about something, the more you are afraid of, afraid of it. But the more you learn about and understand it, that's when you become tolerant. Um, in our history, uh, they hated black people, okay? There are less people who hate black people today than in our history. But what happened? Over time, they learned to live together and adapt and know there's no reason to be afraid of them. Now they are afraid of Hispanics. They think they're gonna take over Arizona, okay? <laughs> now they are afraid of Muslims. They think Muslims are going to take over. So this is nothing new. This has been around in our history this for a long cycle. time. Ask him where he's from. Say that again. This is just another cycle. And this where are you from? This, I'm, a, I'm a U.S. citizen. No, but I'm just, uh, with your accent, where are you from? My accent is from Gambia in West Africa. Okay. He said in Gambia. Yeah. Gambia, West Africa. This has been going, so this is just one cycle, like you said. Yeah. So another cycle will come around. Someone else will be a target. Um, the imam preaches all the time. Uh, that violence is not acceptable in Islam. So what do you think about the two people that, that uh, supposedly went here and then the ones who went to Garland and uh, went to attack the uh, other event? Their, their actions are unwarranted and we do not condone their actions and they should not have gone there. What However, are, how do you think I they're getting rattled, radicalized? The First Amendment of the United States Constitution that they were provoked. Uh, how do you think that they became radicalized, so to say? We don't know them. We don't know them. How long were they uh, attending here? Do you know? We don't know, and I don't know. I've never met them, and I don't know them. I, How long have you been going here? About six years. 
Okay, so out of that entire time, six years? <laughs> yeah, you didn't get radicalized. Exactly. <laughs> but did you ever see those people? No. Did you, sir? Oh, no. Go I, 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 I'm an attorney. Because you think they were set up? Do you think they were set up at all? <laughs> no, I believe their actions are uncalled for. Violence is not accepted in Islam. Oh, no, but do you think that someone put them up to that? Do you think someone no. kind of grabbed them and uh, radical? I, I don't have personal knowledge of that, but I know here it's not, it didn't happen here at the mosque. If they are radicalized, they must have radi been radicalized elsewhere. And radicalized is a subjective term. It depends what you mean by radicalized. What Saying I Saying they want to go kill people for a cartoon. Does not tolerate their conduct. Oh well, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, radical if you say you want to kill somebody because they drew a cartoon. Well, we do not support what they did. Okay, what they did was unacceptable. However, we don't see anybody speaking against uh, provoking Islam. They are provoking us to act, and it's our job as Muslims to restrain so us. A get cartoon. Provoked. I mean, that, that's our job as just adult human beings to restrain and. No. to restrain ourselves no, no, if no. someone's verbally attacking you, you you sit there and you move on if you decide to take it to, to violence and that's what escalates there, there is speech that's protected and there's speech that is not protected mm. all so speech is that protected violence is not protected speech okay speech that uh, even hate speech is protected but speech that provokes violent for someone to act is not protected speech I believe what they were doing in Texas the was provocative speech and it's not protected under the Constitution. However, I equally believe the conduct of those that went there, allegedly from here in Phoenix, their conduct is unacceptable and, they, and violence is, not, is also unacceptable under Islam. And the Imam believes that, our Muslim community believes that. And like the guy said, the best sign here is the one that says, fuck ISIS, not Islam. Yeah, I like that one. Hey, okay. tell him he should be the spokesman. Uh, he's he's an excellent speaker. I don't speak you're, no, 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 you're very excellent. I don't speak for the mosque, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're, it's your opinion, yeah. Yeah, I don't speak for the mosque. And, uh, but this scene, to me, is not surprising. For me, it's just for sure. Well, do you think... Does he think... Do, do, do you think it stems? Well, no, but I'm saying, do you think it stems from the fact that uh, with a lot of the ISIS stuff, the beheadings, uh, because they've gone around killing uh, Christians, and they're they're lining people up on the beaches, chopping their heads off. Our Don't you think that them? kind of gets a? Oh, and then on top of that, we know that our government drops some weapons as well too. So I mean, no, no, what protest is nothing new. This has been around forever. Oh yeah, I go to protests all the time. Exactly. So this is not the first time this happened. The events you mentioned, this type of these types of protests have been around before those events occur. So we can't blame this protest on those events that you mentioned. So um, <coughs> if that event is over, tomorrow they'll have a different reason to protest. Well, but they're the protesting because of the Charlie Hebdo attacks. And fear I mean, originally. of someone else's religion. They are here. They think Islam and Muslims are gonna take over. Well, you don't no. think. You don't think. Well, no, people are protesting because of the Charlie Hebdo. They are thing. in Europe. So the the fact that the fact that <laughs> armed gunmen came in and shot people because they drew something. I mean, people attack all kinds of religions, but that's where you have to restrain yourself. Exactly. We had the Holocaust. The Jewish people uh, were persecuted. Those they were not persecuted by Muslims. Okay. We had the Crusaders, who were the Christians. They were not the Muslims. The Crusaders killed more people than the most than the so-called Muslims did. You see what I'm saying? So people will always have reason to protest, and it's their right to protest. What I, what we don't accept is provoking someone to act because you hate them. That's not protected on the again United putting States. the blame back on the people drawing pictures. But then you're blaming the people who are drawing. You're blaming okay. the victim. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> What's your name again? Abdul. Abdul. All right. Oh, he you. should be the spokesperson. He's he was yeah. he was great, except for the fact that he said that some people you, there's some free speech that's not protected. That's where he's wrong. Yeah, where is that in the Constitution? Yeah, yeah where does it say you can't uh, incite? And it's like, one, how do you know what's going to incite B? violence? You could say, "Hey, have a good day," and he can turn around and punch you. Yeah, but that's, you know? I don't think that's in the Constitution. But I think that that they did hey, they're decide that. The lines now. They're crossing the lines. Oh man. Who's crossing the line? Mm. We are better than that. Oh, no. No, we are not. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't.
Anybody who just tuned in, you're watching live coverage of protest outside and inside Phoenix, actually, at a mosque where uh, it was a Marine who decided to hold a free speech protest and uh, basically have a draw Muhammad uh, contest, part two, in response to the attacks that happened in Garland, Texas. And he's being condemned by the media. Definitely the mainstream media is condemning this guy for and saying you can't go out and, and incite hate. And incite violence by doing this. Well, that's not what like he's doing. Oh, they're making the. <laughs> uh, they're parting the seas. Tell them you're a vet. You need some water. Hear me real quick. They are pushing the the ropes over and pushing everybody onto the sidewalks now. You can no longer stand in the street. Ah. They're widening the area so people can uh, attack at each other. Are there any tank ambulances in the area? <laughs> yeah, does they have the huge military base? I guess that's in Tucson, right? Uh, he said people are afraid of the Hispanics. There's hey Hispanics guys, living all over screen. Phoenix and Arizona. They're, they're not afraid of Hispanics. What they are is saying, we can't have illegal aliens come into this country and start sucking off the system without being contributors to the system. And that's what they're saying they don't like. And they're coming in and getting a lot of free stuff. They're getting free bus tickets everywhere. They're not being deported. And that's what people have a problem with. We cannot save the entire world ourselves. We have to get other people to show them the way to save themselves. And it's not by all everybody coming here and bringing all your problems and all your baggage along with it. Right, and not, I mean, and if you do come here, you don't have to assimilate. Yeah, pretending like, oh, you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's that shot coming from, guys? That's the Fox affiliate out of Arizona. Okay. Will someone move uh, is anybody else covering it? Um, any other affiliates? Or you think it is, is Fox the only one? This was the aerial footage we were showing earlier. They, they were posting the aerial footage. Oh, okay. So we've just kept the feed coming in. Oh, Come on, is this, this has got to be one of our longest live broadcasts uh, in a while. I don't know when we did the, uh, uh, was it the election or the... Well, we Union. did Ferguson was pretty long, but Ferguson was pretty long. That was like a five hour actually. I think it's good though that we do these, you know, at least once every other month. I think it's good to get out here and do this live stuff and react to things you're seeing in real time. Right. We are always teleprompter free. <laughs> That's that true. We do have some TVs here, but we're just looking at stuff you guys are seeing. Uh, we're seeing the feed that's going on the air and then we have a, a feed going back into the control room. We can see people eating pizza. <laughs> yeah, they've uh, widened uh, the road and pushed everyone back to the sidewalks now. You know, I've gotten several tweets of people saying, uh, Joe Antekuzar saying, can't see how there's a built in hate factor to artistic expression. <laughs> the fact that you're drawing a cartoon is not a provocation. Uh, <laughs> Well, and Obviously, just like you said, the when the when the artist did piss Christ, I mean, people were really upset about that, but they didn't try to go kill him or anything. They were just upset that their tax dollars were paying for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Robert Winters says, looks like they're clearing a path for a vehicle to move in. Which could, do you see any vehicles there? Uh, any any MRAPs or anything on the staging area? Hold on, let me walk down the road real quick. I see some lights flashing. <laughs> I've got my earpiece out so I can charge the phone. Sure. Yeah, they pushed everyone back because of that scuffle that happened, I think. Because people started uh, running across and into the road, and uh, one officer got hit a little bit. So I, I think they were just like, all right, that's enough. We're going to push back. Settle down, everybody. Settle down. So we have our reporter, Joe Biggs, on location. If you're just joining us, this is our... Uh, we're working on our third hour at this point. We started at 7 o'clock, over our third hour, well into our third hour now, just about. 
halfway through make sure, yeah. getting to the bottom of the hour and this is our live coverage Yo. of the Muhammad yeah. Prophet on, cartoon car right contest right yeah, we came down fourth here. hour actually going into the fourth. we're going into our fourth hour yeah we're, it's like three and a half hours yeah, yeah, yeah. oh there was thousands of people here earlier and now it's starting to die out I was just gonna see is there a big vehicle down there getting ready to pull up there's a you mean like a MRAP like an amp wrap or, or something no I didn't see an M wrap but they they've got uh, of course the undercovers and stuff like that but I mean, on both sides, they're they're doing stuff good. Yeah, there were people on the road a minute ago, but they pushed back because some guys ran across our scuffling. Oh, real? Oh, that just happened here? like yeah, just a few minutes ago. Uh, so they pushed everything back. Well, let's walk back down here then. Yeah, yeah. If there's nobody, uh. So they said there's no MRAPs down there. It's just regular pe police vehicles. If you don't mind, man, when you get a chance, let me get a picture with you guys. Yeah, yeah, we can do a picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is my girlfriend Lane. Hey, Hi. How you this doing? is why we don't let people come to the office because this would happen all day long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you think about coming to the yeah, office, don't right just send us an email. Just please. don't even think about it. It's much. It's much easier. That on is a pre-crime. <laughs> it is pre-crime to even think about coming to this office. <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely cleared out a good bit. The other side is definitely stronger as far as uh, numbers, but uh. Yeah, I mean, there's no need to feel like people protested peacefully. I think you need a three burst of an air horn and everybody just walk away. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's made their point. And, that's the signal. But if they want to stay out there, go ahead. But that's... If uh, we're getting a, lot, a few people asking us if you're able to speak to any more Muslims to ask them if they have any message for non-Muslims. That is. Nobody I am. That's a tricky Twitter handle there. Hard to read. <laughs> James Knox is active. This is he's put in several tweets. He said, "Remember Rushdie's book? It was Satanic Verses." James is what, and, and that is from what I remember, like the first brush with people being threatened with death for uh, writing something. At least in the in my modern memory, I'm sure there's other people who he was making correlations to where the 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 prophecies Muhammad received weren't from God. The did that come? That especially evil. Did that go out over the, the air, Marcos? Yeah, I'm okay. on the air. Okay, I'm on the air right now. I read the satanic verses, and I got looks everywhere I went because people didn't. So they would just read the title. I'm I'm looking at some things right now. We do have a lot of them are are giving the, you know, biker rally anti-Islam. Um, they're obviously putting out the other groups that are against this kind of going against counter the hate and all that really pushing for everyone to go to Twitter to try to drown out anyone who might be in support of this protest. Um, Maximilius is digging the Twitter action. That's where I see hate at. The right. fact that there's this incredible hate for freedom for liberty to to be able to say what you want to say to be able to go out and do what you want to do without being harassed you know well that's the only to way their tyranny to will reign without having cops storming in on no knock raids and mm -hmm. attacking you right well that's the only way that they can push their authoritarian agenda and rain down the tyranny yeah, <laughs> what did rex say smite us with his <laughs> hand of tyranny you know, but that's that's the only way they can do it is they got to break our break our spirit to take us over. That sounds like one of the worst authoritarian rules when they start telling you what you can't say and what you can't draw and ways that you are not allowed to communicate and they use violence to enforce it. Right. That sounds like one of the worst author authoritarian tricks in the book. You're absolutely right, Marcus, because if we allow them to say that certain things are allowed to be said and others aren't, that's going to be used as a justification to take down web channels. It's going to be used to take down media organizations. That's the way they will come after us if we let them decide that there are certain things that can't be said. Who makes those decisions? There's nothing in the Constitution that gives anyone the right to make decisions as to what speech is allowed and what speech is prohibited. Sorry. You Paul don't have Watson the right it will be to loud not be feminists offended. Who will be making those decisions? <laughs> you don't have the freedom from offense in America. You have the freedom to say what you want. 
I going to tweet everything? No, I, I was wondering if he, uh, Watson's up with us watching this. Oh, I wonder. I don't know. Andrew I haven't heard Liebich, from Watson. Andrew Liebich points out that South Park depicted Muhammad as some sort of fireball wizard with no backlash. You guys get the <laughs> the camera on that? Is there a picture of it? Yeah, oh, yeah. this is this is South Park depicted this. If you can do the doc cam. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> where, where, where is it? There Which hand? There we there go. go. It's getting late, everybody. <laughs> oh, fire. That Look, that's the Prophet Muhammad as depicted on South Park. No backlash. Fireball wizard. <laughs> this is Joe Biggs. <laughs> Somebody's saying something about 9 11. I know, I heard that too. I think the most amazing thing is Joe's just out there with an iPhone bringing you this coverage. And, uh, this, right. This and that's what we always want to point out to, to everyone else. They're like, well, why don't you cover the Zionist agenda all the time? Like, you go out and cover that. Take your phone and go out. And if you have all this knowledge for something, I really, that really bugs me. When people say stuff like that, like, why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover that? Do you know how much tyranny is out there? We can't cover it all. And it's not our job to stay on one specific topic. I day probably after don't, day I probably don't day. do as many reports as I do because it's moving so fast and there's so many other things going on. I, I would put out five reports a day if I could. It's just you can't. There's so much, and There's I think so that that's by design as well, is that you have all these fires going that, you know, the fire department can't put them all out because they can't get all across town. And I really respect people like Bev Harris who just do one thing. I'm just doing black box voting. That's it. This is my this is my task or the food, babe. I'm just doing food safety. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not getting involved. We're, we cover everything. Right. I can't think of something we don't cover. Right. They probably still hear, you know, hey, why didn't you cover that kind of food? Or that kind of attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got something on Twitter from Zach Mount. He has uh, he asks, were there any winners declared at the Muhammad Art Contest? Do we have any pictures of any entries? Uh, well, they, we saw last contest winner, but I don't think we, we Well, they were any. supposed to declare a winner at the end of this protest. Travis says, when you stand up for free speech, everybody's a winner. That's true. <laughs> That's true. There you go. <laughs> we're all winners. Hey, wait a minute. Is this Common Core? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's how here's how tolerant Andrew Cuomo is, a brother of Chris Cuomo. Who are they? Are are they are they these extreme conservatives who are right to life, pro assault weapon, anti gay? Is that who they are? Because if that's who they are, and if they're that if they are the extreme conservatives, they have no place in the state of New York because that's not who New Yorkers are. How's that for tolerance? Yeah, that's pretty I think tolerant. that sounds kind of hateful and provocative, don't you? <laughs> you right don't to life. Like exactly. I love how they're saying like right to life. Yeah. How does how does saying like Because he wants to kill you. <laughs> being <laughs> for why. life. When did that When you're become... old and, and not working and providing a tax base, then he wants you to have the right to die. Well he he'll he'll want and he his wants right the to right life to when he gets kill old. half the black babies in yeah. New York. That's what he that's what he wants. Right. Well, more killed than have been born there. But I'm racist for pointing that out. I'm sorry. Racist. And sort of extremist. Yeah, there people are really, really digging this Twitter. We should probably do this once a week. I've been saying I also want to have a contest where I I mean I gotta, you know, I gotta run this by the the boss, man, but I re I wanna have a contest for our Prison Planet subscribers. I think we should do like a monthly giveaway or something, something one of our big products. I don't know. We do appreciate you guys. You really do help us fund this operation and send bigs out to do all of this extremist activity. <laughs> right on. So what do you think about all these uh, people coming out here doing this? What do you think about it? I love it. You love it. All right, cool. Good. And don't you think that the Constitution says that you have the right to say whatever you want, and if it, if it offends you, they know well. Just get over it. Right, right. That doesn't that doesn't mean that you're able to go out and go shoot people up or threaten to cut someone's head off or cut someone's head off because you don't like what they said or drew. Right. Right. All over broadcasts in different states because it lets people know about. All right. Hey man, uh, I just got one question: is, is, is Alex like really like 
how he is in personal. Is Al this guy wants to know if Alex is how he is on the show off the air. You guys want to tell him real quick? <laughs> Alex is sometimes more intense off the air. Yeah, he um, holds back a little bit. Because it's a family show, and he doesn't want to get too angry about stuff sometimes. But, yeah, yeah you've seen him have to. <laughs> he breaks the mic sometimes off air, and he gets really upset with this. This is this is real. And, and real he has deal. everyday problems. He, you know, he loses his cell phone. You know, he's, he's, <laughs> I've seen him actually quit smoking and, and be successful doing that. He's got everyday problems just like everybody else out there. You know, uh, sometimes he forgets to put gas in his car. And, you know, he's got so much going on. So... Yeah, I mean, he's, Alex is, as, you know, I hear people say he's putting on an act. He's definitely not putting on an act. Definitely not. What if he is, is then his get. entire life is an act, yeah. which I don't believe. I mean, Alex is like that. Even when, I remember we took a day off one time, half a day actually, and we went to Barton Springs and we were, and we were shooting B roll for a, a piece on Barton Springs, but that was considered a day off. And we went and got snow cones and we're sitting there eating them. <laughs> and they kind of tasted chemically and funny. <laughs> And, he, cause, and he's looking at me. I'm like, yes, yeah, kind of tastes weird. He goes, let's investigate. He pulls out his phone. We go over there. We ask the guy for the, the syrup jar. We're looking at it. And we're like, yep, has aspartame in it. It has this red dye. <laughs> and then we start preaching to the people at who are getting snow cones. You just got aspartame in it. You know what aspartame does? You know how it's made? It's bacteria poop. I mean, <laughs> you know, if, if, it, if this was all at night, he wouldn't be doing that. He would yeah. be having a good time at Barton Springs, but instead he's investigating the snow cone man yeah. and what he's putting in the snow cones. What, what were you showing me? Were you showing me something? Yes. Uh, I wanted you to respond to this oh. tweet. They said, if they did not wear shirts saying F Islam, then the pitch for free speech would be more convincing. I don't... I mean, he has, that's the whole point of free speech is you can... Do that if you want. If if it offends people, that's what you know. David Knight, you brought people this wear up. Shirts to say yeah. F the Westboro police. Baptist we Church, awful people. They, I just, it, they make me cry. I just watched a video today where they were out protesting a Marine's funeral, and there, there is a, there is a, a, um, a troop of veterans that come out and they station themselves in between the Westboro Baptist Church and the funeral attendees, and they block them off. And, you know, that's one way to block that hate speech. But, you know, that brought tears to my eyes because I just don't understand how people can be that hateful. But you know what? I don't misguided. want to murder them. Misguided and hateful. And as uh, one person just tweeted here, you know, point out that uh, you can go to jail for denying the Holocaust in Europe. Some yeah. European countries. You, you really can. I mean, not just for saying it, but if you write a publication saying that, uh, you know, that, that it didn't happen, they, they can consider that. In some instances, they have considered that to be hate speech. So I think that's deplorable. I think you ought to be able to say whatever you wish. I mean, I personally believe that there was a Holocaust. I think there's a lot of evidence for it. Nevertheless, people who feel otherwise need to be able to say that we need to have a clash of ideas. When you gag people's speech, then they start to wonder, well, what's really up with that? And rightfully so. That's what we see happening all the time in America, that the government will not be open and honest with us when they finally do talk. They usually give us conflicting lies. They'll tell us one lie one day, another lie another day. That's why people start doing investigations. Then uh, they call us conspiracy theorists. Well, I think we can sum up tonight with uh, with Maximilius's tweet. Popular speech doesn't need to be protected. That's it right there. Right. That's right. It. The only type of spe is, is, is speech that could be inflammatory to people. That's what needs to be protected. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, is beside the point. It still needs to be protected. Or this country's gone. And when our country goes, and there's people working on, on getting rid of our country right now. When our country goes, the whole world's going to descend into a hell pit. Yeah. And all the little communists running around here that are living in this Western world that love it so much, that love the designer sunglasses they wear and the designer clothes that they're wearing, <laughs> uh, they're, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Yeah. Well, that's their answer to police violence in America against minorities is communism. Yeah. And even, you know, even Mao said, I'm going to do a report on this next week. Mao even said, communism doesn't work once the revolution succeeds. It doesn't work. He even admits it. All these people run around worshiping Mao and they, they don't even, he, he didn't even believe the system he was pushing and wrote about in his little red book that yeah. they carry around. His little red book. He just needed the useful idiots. Yeah. Well, he could see that it didn't work. He <laughs> said. <laughs> saw people starving by the millions.
right. tens of millions uh, when he did this cultural revolution. You know what works? Local farms, local power, mm -hmm. deconsolidation, decentralization. That's what works. Yeah, he had this idealistic idea that everybody ought to go back to the land and that I'll be better off for it. Yet he didn't have any idea himself how to run a farm, how to grow things. So that centralized management made it all fail. There were people that could make it work, but... Uh, he probably killed them. Yeah, he, he killed them. They had he glasses definitely on. did kill them. Yeah. You know, you read, the, you read the letters from Pol Pot. They had kids that survived the uh, Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot and all that. Well, that whole revolution that went on only, only killed about 3 million people. But, you know, these were kids who had they saw their parents killed. They were going after anybody that could read, anybody that had glasses, anybody that was educated. And if you were older, they got rid of you because those people knew what freedom was. And then they knew they could take the kids and brainwash them and make them turn them into work slaves. Mm -hmm. That's not freedom. That's not a utopian society that you think you're going to get. And that's what's going to happen when you go that route. That's what happens. And that's why we have to worry so much about what they're doing in the colleges. In many cases, it's indoctrination and uh, brainwashing, especially when it comes to freedom of speech hate speech, all the isms that they're preaching to everyone. That's what's so concerning about what's going on in the colleges, because it is a way of social control. And they started early. They started K through 12 as well. Right. It's getting earlier and earlier yeah. now. And now it's this whole thing with white privilege. And, and I actually took an African-American history class. I learned all about white privilege. I saw all of the advertising and stuff like that um and and it there is a case for it it's absolutely true it's not just like this myth that's out there but the way that it's being indoctrinated into young people is that they are becoming racist themselves against white people you even have white people hating themselves who are there for this you know and it's i mean i just think that that's those people are weak <laughs> don't be weak don't be weak don't be weak that's a that's a saying that comes around, that goes around here. Don't be weak. Don't be weak. <laughs> that's mental weakness, not physical weakness. Mental weakness. Don't be weak. Yeah. Don't, don't get be... pulled into these little these psychological games. Right. And it is important to understand your history, to understand facts, to see what things are really going on, so that you can have empathy and you can understand, so that when you do see these protests or you know a lot of people g getting upset, saying Black Lives Matter, you can understand why that is happening. And, you know, but but don't allow yourself to get sucked in to the racial division. Oh, goodness. What's going on? Well, I don't know, but people are running. Are the cops running? Yes, everybody's running. I don't know what's going on. I didn't hear any noises, but people are yelling and... Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Keep talking. All right. So I don't know what's going on. There's some kind of skirmish. They crossed the line to us. Uh, yeah. Don't cross that line! The proverbial line in the sand. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on right now. Someone keeps saying tear gas. I heard someone say stand your ground. Yeah, because there were some people uh, pushing and the guy was saying, hey, you know, if someone pushes you, stand your ground. <laughs> well, that's about it. That's the last few people. <laughs> Tell that one guy, thank you. There you are. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, Biggs, can you see the group that you went over and tried to talk to who were outing you as an InfoWars person? Uh, they, I mean, that whole side just cleared out now. I don't know where everyone went. Wow. Look, there's no one on the other side now. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The, the, event, it, the event wasn't supposed to be the, some big pop-off protest, you know, for huh? what happened? Just a couple of guys. I guess some weeks. Kind of it was just a planned protest. No, she's getting the best of people. So now the now the uh, the helicopters flash or uh, shine a light on this guy with his kids, his family. I guess he was one of the ones involved. So the helicopter keeps shining his light directly on him. Hmm. Well, that is that the police helicopter or Fox News? <laughs> it's probably a police helicopter. Well, I, it's a pretty bright light. I'm pretty light. sure that's police. Yeah. <laughs> Unless Fox News has got a Skrillex concert going on. <laughs> All right, well we'll, we'll we'll sign you off now, and then we'll close out the show. Um, stay safe, and uh, we'll see. And I guess you're going to be in Baltimore next. Yes, indeed, tomorrow night. Or at some point in time. At some point in the future, possibly. Sometime, possibly, maybe within the next 48 <laughs> hours, I could be. <laughs> back on the east coast again what's your what's your plan in baltimore uh to go to uh north and Penn, the area that jakari and i were at last time that seems to be the uh the kind of focal point the uh, main area where a lot of stuff has been happening yeah why do you think it was so different there in baltimore versus cleveland because the community came together i mean the 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 community really cares. I mean, the fact that every religious leader in that town came out there and held hand in hand, usually religions that you wouldn't see, you know, talking that much around and then kind of coming together. So why not? I mean, yeah. when you act that way, that's the kind of uh, reaction you're going to get. You're going to have people act uh, rational and have uh, more... Uh, more of a respect for what's going on when they when they can tell that the community cares you know people went out and protested but everything remained calm i mean Cleve, uh, cleveland no i'm talking about in cleveland oh. so in cleveland you know they 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 handed they handled everything a lot better hmm. yeah it didn't seem to be any outside agitators man it's not i mean there was the rev, the revcom guys were there but i mean oh God. they couldn't get the support I think I think Cleveland likes their sports more than they like anything else. You know the <laughs> well, fact that well, it was that kind the, of an the, odd. The data. Cavaliers are about to the, now that the Cavaliers are going in the championship. I don't think they uh, are going to waste their time riding when their sports team is finally going to go to the uh, playoffs. I thought they got eliminated. Yeah. No, yeah, the Cavs are in. They won. Really? I thought they lost. No. Oh, uh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Like, All right, well, Joe Biggs, thank you for uh, sacrificing being out there on the front lines of the info war. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing out there, and uh, we'll see you in Baltimore. And um, I guess that's about it. I think we're going to yeah. wrap it up here. Let's go ahead and take Joe off so nobody sees where he's going. <laughs> and uh, and then stay, uh, Mr. Jennings, you can just stay on there until he gets in his car just so we know he's okay. And I guess we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. We're coming in on four and a half hours of broadcast. It's been uh, quite an event. Uh, hey. Very interesting. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be on this long, but I, I thought we were going to roll out about 930. Two hours yeah. later, here we are. Well, I think it was pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see how, you know, the media covers it tomorrow. You guys mm -hmm. were all there. You watched it live so you can see for yourself what exactly was happening. You're not just going to get the bits and pieces um, that some other news outlets might want to give you that spin.